We're talking Barbie. Now, we're talking cancellation and we're talking David's mouth. Let's go. Full. Oh, God. Yes. Before we get into the segment, 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 universal disclaimer from Dane. I can't protect. I'm not. uh, By the way, if you look at our TikTok portfolio, I'm not the one that spews this hegemony. Okay. Hey, listen, all I'm saying, listen, everybody that listens to this podcast or watches it knows David's going to be the one that gets us canceled. I'm going to be the one that gets us killed. And we agree on that. We yes. both we both should cancel that. Yes. We're, we're comfortable so, with that. In pursuit of not getting So David can disclaim everything I say that can get us killed. And I disclaim everything David says that could get us canceled. That's it. It's a, it's like a miniature mutually assured destruction. Kind and of we've thing. shook we hands and we're between on us. a gentleman's. We appreciate that <laughs> both of us accept these terms and we are willing to move forward as equals. Yes, we are who we are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so anyway, full disclosure uh, at the beginning of this, neither one of us have seen the movie. And I generally have a rule of thumb for myself, whether it's commenting on a book, commenting on a movie, commenting on anything. If I haven't put in the time to read it or watch it or whatever, I generally will not comment on it because that's not fair to the people who wrote it or put the effort in to create it, all of that kind of stuff. However, we're going to engage in this discussion based on what the proponents that we are arguing against say about the movie. Ordain. So this isn't what we claim to think the movie's about without having watched it. This is what people who like the movie say about the movie, and then we have our own thoughts on it. So I just wanted to throw that disclaimer out there so that we don't, you know, try to make it sound like we're experts on this movie that we haven't even Dan, seen. Dan, can I steal a term from your yes. lexicon? Yeah. We are working with the preponderance of evidence that has been given to us by the state, and in this case, the state being most media. Yes. Fair? Yeah. We're working with what everyone else is saying about it because as, as we do in judicial services, yeah, we weren't there at the time of the crime, at the scene of the crime. So right. we have to do our best to figure it out. Right. Nor do we have any interest to watch this movie, but there has been so much ink spilled, digital ink all over Twitter and in you know news articles and everywhere else about this movie. You more or less don't even have to see it to know everything that goes on in it because everybody is just fawning over it. I mean, to its credit, it, it has it's made over a billion dollars at the box office. So that's that's not a slouch of a movie. But uh, so anyway, a lot has been said about it, and David and I have thoughts. Now, the particular thing that we're talking about today is a tweet from an account called uh, Macarena. Um, and Macarena? Name, Macarena. 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 The way to put a little head of Costa Buena. Anyway. Is that trademarked? <laughs> uh, nameless, faceless guy is going to put up the picture of the tweet here. And uh, the tweet says this, quote, so again, I'm quoting from somebody who liked the movie for what the movie's objective is. And as it appears to me, based on all of the writings about it, the movie is supposed to be a sort of like overarching girl power down with the patriarchy, you know, kind of girls are, you know, going to take over the world. Who yada, runs yada, the world? yada. It's a very like, Who like I said, girl world? power type movie. Who okay. runs the world? So this is what the tweet has to say. Not a Queen Bee fan, Dan. A proponent of the movie. <laughs> Quote, people watched the Barbie movie, which is about how this world praises men for doing the bare minimum. While women struggle every day and their efforts are never enough, And the first thing they do is praise Ryan Gosling and forget about America Ferreira's amazing performance. Now, I know who America Ferreira is. I don't know what role she played in the Barbie movie. I'm sure one of the... Who is she named after again? America. Who is that? This country. Weird. (laughs) Anyway, um... I'm sure she played one of the many, you know, companion dolls to to Barbie. I don't know which one. If Dua Lipa could pull off Mermaid Barbie, I'm pretty sure that there's no... Is there an Oscar in here? Is all I'm asking. There's probably not an Oscar anywhere in this fucking piece of shit. Um, I don't know. I've heard talk that uh, no. there might be like a supporting role type Oscar For nomination. Gosling? I don't know. 
I don't know. For him being a betrayer to his own goddamn gender. There might be a best supporting actor or actress in there, or sorry, actress for Margot Robbie and maybe a supporting for Gosling or Ferreira. I don't know. Anyway, that's not the point. That's not what we're here to talk about. I'm just asking. What we're here to talk about is David's probably illicit thoughts on some of these things. And then oh, I have... Oh, nice job. I have an overarching take on me. Oh, gotcha. I'll, I'll play with you as, as long as, you know, I, if I can, can keep my real world job. And it's not... So anyway, when we read through this first, David had... Something really jumped out at David and you probably get... It jumped out at me too, but I'm, we're going to let David take it away. I just want to read it again. The, the The part where it says... Uh, people watch the Barbie movie, which is about how this world praises men for doing the bare minimum. David, take it away. How does this world praise men for doing the bare minimum? Do tell. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank the Academy for having me here. Um, Read the next sentence after that. We like to uh, praise... Doing the bare minimum. While women struggle every day and their efforts are never enough. That's what does that what sound like to you? Uh, what does that, that sound sounds like, like oppression Olympics. Does it Claiming sound like... the victim does because Does it sound it's, like every argument you've ever had with a toxic girlfriend that you've ever had before in your life? You work all day. Okay, you're with your friends. I'm here and you're not paying attention to me. You made me wait five minutes for a text message and I'm sitting here and you're not paying attention to me. I think my lucky stars, I haven't had many toxic ex-girlfriends. Oh, oh so. you were you were you're privy to that. You you weren't in it. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm speaking from her. Yes. I He saw. I, I've witnessed it. We've 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 been through things. Anyway, so what I'm saying is like, so is that not the literal definition of gaslighting? And if I may, before you answer that question, what was the second sentence again? I want to. I I really want to digest what they're what they're what they're. The world is. praises men for doing the bare minimum, bare minimum, while women struggle every day, and their efforts are never enough. Their efforts are never enough. Yeah. Their efforts are never enough. In this society, are you allowed to call a woman fat? Um, I mean, there's you fat can women say whatever models. you want. You may not there's exist. Fat, there's fat women models. Yeah. Are there any dad bod models? Is that what you're saying? Are there any plus size men models? No. No. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, men have 99% of all conflict-related battles within warfare were men. 99% um, of bricklayers are men. 99% of construction workers are men. Um, what exactly are we trying to do here? Yeah, I mean... The plight of... But we hear about women's issues a lot. But what about men's issues? What's the suicide rate for men? Much higher. I'm not sure of all the numbers. Incarceration. Much, much higher. When you even it out. Well, David, the incarceration, that's because men are toxic and they deserve oh, to be. Oh, that's they right. Deserve we deserve, okay, we don't deserve shit. Uh, how does society get built? Yeah, and maintained. And uh, who feeds else. us, by the way? Uh, yeah. Are there a lot of farmers, women farmers out there working? Listen, the David, all of those things are the bare minimum. Yeah. Okay. The All the entire, things that make this thing work are so minuscule in comparison. The in entire comparison. built environment. They raise the children, Dane. <laughs> the Even though they don't, they give it to Lupe David, if you make enough money. David, the entire built environment that has given us all a standard of living that the kings of Europe only a couple hundred years Women ago. Women stormed the beaches possibly, of Normandy. <laughs> And nobody gives them credit for it whatsoever. These poor, poor women. What can we do? Hmm. You know what? You remember that we can do it too? You remember that? that yeah, Rosie World Riveter. Rosie, you, you, you know what they were doing? They are working the factory jobs. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because all the because men... Because the men were getting blown exactly, to pieces in Europe. Exactly, because it was the easier option. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? Like... No offense. No, David. It's because the patriarchy is the only one that would You're let right. men go over there. And to then get what happens in that trench. movie? What happens in the movie? Ken is a part of Barbie's world. 
where he has to ask Barbie, hey, can I wear this outfit today? Hey, can I do this outfit? Can I do this? Hey, Barbie, can I do this? No, you can't, Ken, because it just makes us, okay, Barbie, you always know best. And then all of a sudden they go to the real world from what I'm understood in the movie. And then all of a sudden, the patriarchy happens. And then men run everything, and it's bad, and nobody likes it, but somehow it's working appropriately. <laughs> and then what happens, Dane? And then what happens? Barbie wants to be a part of the, of the real world. I believe the movie ends with a gynecological visit. Because it's so centered around genitalia, and they mention the fact that neither of them have genitalia throughout the entirety of the movie. And Barbie's big... Are you sure you didn't watch the movie? It sounds like you watched the movie. I had, a, I had an intrinsic breakdown that I could not avoid by somebody that lives in my house with me. She watched it? Oh, yeah. Oh. And she gave me the bit-by-bit play down, or, or breakdown and left zero. Did she feel empowered after she left the movie? I hope not, because that, <laughs> if that movie is anything, it's disempowering for women. Because what did yeah. Barbie want to do at the end? Yeah, it's the she bigotry to join of, the patriarchy. Yeah. It's the bigotry of, of low expectations. And it's the old adage. It, it, it all boils down to the old adage. If you treat them like shit, they will come back. If you treat them like you don't want them, they will want you. And that's literally what happened in Barbie. But they're so, no, it's so, it's so aggrandizing for females. No, it's actually fucking not. It's pretty cutting you off at the knees. Because Barbie had control of an entire universe over here, but left that universe to join the fucked up patriarchy. To prove a point? I don't, uh, explain it to me, Dane. I'm, I'm lost. Well, so here's my, so... I, I don't know if that was the conclusion of David's take on the movie. I'm not done. I'm taking a sabbatical. Here's, here's, here's my take off. that's that's a little bit different. Now, if you read this tweet, right, the, the person who posted it seems to be a little bit caught off guard, so to speak. <laughs> why is Shocking. Ryan Gosling, the character of Ken, why is he being praised when don't you know this movie is about female empowerment and don't you know America Ferreira had an amazing performance and don't you know? And, and it's just this, this whole feeling of, of I cannot believe that the broader society, the zeitgeist, if you will, is... Is, is praising Goslin and, and like and like he's the star of the show and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you exactly why that happens to these people. And I mean these people, the people that write this type of tweet. The reason why, let's go back to the cult list, right? The group is elitist. This person is the same type of person who watched Parks and Rec and is like, <laughs> Ron Swanson, what a dumb loser idiot. What a caricature of a libertarian. Da, 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 da. Fast forward, he's the most loved character on the entire show. He was written to be a, a, a characterization, or, or, or sorry, a caricature of libertarianism, and he became the most loved guy on the show. Right, Ryan Gosling is supposed to be this ripped ab kin doll. Ha ha ha! Let's just poke fun at the dumb guy who gets put down or whatever. Most loved character in the whole show. To take it into the political realm, these are the same people that said Hillary Clinton got ninety five percent chance to beat Donald Trump in twenty sixteen, and they were completely blindsided by the results. Why? Because as elitists, as true elitists, they can never, ever, ever see the world differently than through their own rose-colored glasses. Everything that they think is right and correct and the only good way to do things, and everybody who thinks marginally different than them is a castaway. We don't care about their opinions. And so when the larger public that lives in flyover country or the deep south or Florida or any of these other toxic places they, they point to on a map, when all of those people were like, yeah, I kind of resonate with Ken or I kind of resonate with Ron Swanson or, you know, maybe that orange man's really onto something when he says the federal government's been screwing me over for all these years. It just completely blindsides them because they have completely ignored those people's um objections to the way society is running, largely running by them at their hands because they're the elites, 
right? And so this is why they get blindsided by why does everybody love Ken, damn it? He's not supposed to be the one you love. He's supposed you're to be supposed to love Barbie and you're supposed to love America Ferreira's character. You're going to keep getting blindsided if you stay in your cult and think that the only way to see the world is through your rose-colored lenses. This is going to keep happening to you. And yes, you're going to deflect and you're going to say, this is another example of the patriarchy because to admit the other which is the actual truth, is that you are just a piece of shit who refuses to sit down across from your common man that you may not see eye to eye with, but at least try to understand their point of view. As long as you keep walking through the world like that, you're going to keep getting blindsided by characters like Ken and Ron Swanson and Donald Trump in future elections. So again, if the theme of this episode is anything, it's that mirrors are your friend. Dane, what's the only remedy for a bad thought? Um, or a bad viewpoint? I mean, to have it challenged so you can examine it, examine the other person's point, but thought, also right? self-examine your own. Is a yeah. better argument. What's yeah, the, bad the marketplace of ideas, as it Correct. were. Correct. And yeah. what do you have to do with that? You got to engage in difficult conversations. But what don't they want to do? Ever engage. I mean, they have a term for the middle of the country. They literally call it flyover country. That tells you exactly what the they way, think about over, everybody that lives in flyover country. That flyover country feeds the rest of you very intelligent country. Right. So again, it's so short-sighted to think that your viewpoint is the only right viewpoint. And again, to revert back to our meme where we started, it seems to be a running theme. You might be a part of a cult if you think that your perspective is the only perspective ever. And I did my attack on the on the surface level bullshit that they had on Barbie, but they did a very succinct job of leveling out why they were so so short sighted and the deeper issues with the Barbie conundrum and the conundrum within our society as it is right now. And I hope that it's only social media based because, you know, yeah. social media always amplifies things to a disproportionate amount of angst that it doesn't need to go to. But other than that, Barbie, cool. Just make it about Barbie. If you want to watch it on the surface level, get high with your girlfriend, make her happy, and then do whatever you guys do with your genitalia that you both have afterwards awesome that's what the movie is meant for if you're looking for life lessons in barbie seek a psychologist because you're not and a psychologist that you know is willing to challenge your beliefs not just agree with all of them and have you have yourself chemically castrated um all that being said if you're looking for life lessons from barbie don't vote in this next election and maybe like Dan said, look or, in the mirror. Or ever again, please. <laughs> or, or don't don't go take to Twitter and or X or whatever the fuck it is and espouse your viewpoints on there. But Dane, do you have any more thoughts on this? No. That was that was my take on on Barbie. Excellent. Well, I'm done trying to get us canceled. All right. I lost. I'm done trying to get us killed. Okay. Excellent.